Welcome back to the crop production series. This time we're going to be focusing on insects and discussing the most serious and common insect pest in greenhouse production, which sometimes carry over to nursery crops. We will identify products recommended by independent researchers, their control mechanism, and how those products work within the plant, and then be able to build an insecticide program that should meet your production planning needs. Insect issues pervade all areas of the plants we grow, from the roots to the flowers and everywhere else in between. Root damage comes in the form of root feeding larvae, which also can infest lower plant stems. Stem and leaf insects enjoy the new growth of tender plants while leaf miners tunnel through the parenchyma tissue in their juvenile stages. Flowers prevent a formidable problem due to the physical tightness and lack of vascular movement from the xylem of the plant tissues with which systemic chemicals can be used to be effective. We're going to, to turn this around a little bit and begin at the end. That is, we're going to use this summary sheet of recommended products by pest to start the discussion since there's just so much information to cover. This page gives you the pest cover in this discussion and the control products recommended by independent trials and the label recommendations for each product on the list. We'll start with the root problems, move through the plant, and end at the flowers. Note that there are products mentioned multiple times across varying pests and should be a key to what your chemical room inventory should stock. As always with New Farm, if you have a specific pest problem not mentioned here, since this is only a review of key greenhouse pests, call or email us and we'll work with you directly for a solution that fits your needs. Send your request to New Farm at the listed web address. This slide will be sent again at the end of the presentation. So starting in the root zone, fungus gnat larvae are our worst pest and can be difficult to control. We tend to focus on the larvae, but you need to recognize the adults, the wing forms that move from plant to plant. Four such different looking insects are photographed here. They're all fungus gnats. Systemic insecticide drenches with a long residual like Safari plus an Umre certified biological like Natural will control the adults and the larval stages. To provide another avenue for control, distance insect growth regulator is your choice in preventing the larval stages from maturing to adults, thus breaking the life cycle. All the products listed, including Azotin, Adept, Distance, Safari, Flagship, and Natural should be considered your primary products for controlling fungus gnats. Aphids seem to never leave the production area. Able to reproduce asexually, these are the rabbits of the greenhouse insect pest. As illustrated in the photos, aphids may take on different appearances based on the plants in which they feed. Winged adult aphids can fly to other plants and spread, so control with a contact and a systemic insecticide provide the best process to manage this pest. Reproducing quickly, as illustrated in the last photograph, they may literally suck the life out of a plant in a short period of time. Systemic products such as Altus, Contos, Mainspring, and TriStar, plus these contact insecticides listed, will control aphids. You should include distance insect growth regulator to prevent resistance issues and to prevent the immatures from becoming adults. As these photographs demonstrate, mealybugs come in many shapes and sizes and the adult males are winged. Covered with a waxy surface, control products need to either penetrate those waxes or we need to contaminate the source of food. Systemic drenches with Safari or one of the other systemic products such as Altus or Contos, Mallet, and Flagship will make their food source toxic. Safari applied as a drench will last the time your crop is on the branch usually. If a late season outbreak does occur, use a foliar application with a locally systemic product like TriStar to clean up any lingering insects. Again, an insect growth regulator like Distance will provide additional control for this pest without building resistance. Nothing is more irritating than watching a wave of white flies hovering over a crop. This pest is controllable with a rigorous program of systemic and contact insecticides. Class four insecticides such as Mallet, Safari, and Altus work long-term with an initial trench at the beginning of production. If a late season treatment is needed, a locally systemic spray product like TriStar or Flagship 
or a contact like pedestal, which will prevent any resistance issues, is required. Distance is again suggested for disrupting the life cycle and reducing the insect pressures. Our most destructive spider mite in the greenhouse is the two-spotted mite as illustrated in the first photograph. Two-spotted mites can overwinter in your greenhouse, and sometimes those arachnids do not show the spots as illustrated in the second photograph. Webbing, as visible in the third photograph, is, a, is an indication you already have a major problem. You can see the spider mites in the webbing themselves. Mites reproduce so fast that hitting them hard with a cocktail to impact not only the adults, but the instars and the eggs is critical. Damage in the fourth photograph, as seen from the upper leaf surface, appears as a discoloration between the veins. But looking on the underside, you will see the adults, the instars, and the eggs all in one place. Mites explode on the scene when temperatures are high and the environment is dry. Time of year really makes no difference as I've seen mites in greenhouses in Minnesota in February. Controlling mites if reacting is difficult. Using tetrasand as an ovicide, so an adulticide needs to be mixed in there with this, such as hexagon or judo or engulf. Pylon and mix two can be applied more than once, but rotate after the second application. Sand mite is also use restricted, but reviewing all the listed products, you should have at least three materials in your tank mix for the treatment at one time. At least two adulticides plus an ovicide. Moving over to broad or cyclamen mites, which is a different mite type, that affects many crops, including begonias, cyclamen, and Gerbera daisies. Like the other mite families, they do reside on the underside of leaves and they have three phases of life, the egg, the instar, and the adult. You can see the eggs, the adults, and the instars in the two photographs above. Then there's the typical leaf curling appearance where they're feeding on the underside in between the veins of the leaf. And finally, you can view the infestation on the underside of this New Guinea impatience leaf. Just between the veins, you'll see it's completely covered with mites. Akari, Judo, Pylon, and Sand Mite are the recommended miticides. Plus, you can use Minx 2, which does impact populations, and it's a good rotational material with the other products. Serpentine leaf miners pictured feed on multiple crops in the zigzag pattern. Gerberas and chrysanthemums are primary targets, but they will attack carnation or asters, among other plant hosts. The adults are fly-like and the larvae may appear green to yellow in color, feeding on the parenchyma tissue after the eggs are laid by the adult female. The yellow dots on the mum leaf show exactly where the eggs have been deposited by the adult. Systemic materials work well to control leaf miners, including drenching mainspring or safari. Safari is the most mobile and therefore the fastest sacking systemic in the market. And TriStar or Conserve as foliar sprays later on in the season. TriStar moves directly into the affected tissues once applied. Last on our list, and most menacing perhaps, are thrips. Western flower thrips are identified in the photograph with a light heller head and a darker thorax. Banded greenhouse thrips and chili thrips are also common in the production area. You can see the entire life cycle in the last photograph. Distance as an insect growth regulator can help greatly when applied as a drench. Not one product will control thrips, so adding a systemic product such as Safari that offers a long-term residual control and adding a second classification such as Overture provide effective thrip control. Other products recommended in the program include systemic mainspring plus the combination product Expire and other contact products like Aria, Pylon, Pedestal, and Botanicard. So far, we focused on the key greenhouse pests and the products recommended to control them. Moving forward, we want to focus on the products and how they work, their IRAC class, and the reenter interval, the last number on the line. First on our list are systemic materials from three IRAC classes, 23, 28, and 4. By far, the most popular and used products are the neonicotinoids or class 4A. Superior to the previous general class of insecticides, the organophosphates in safety and duration, products like imidacloprid, which is mallet, dinotefron, safari, 
and acetamiprid, which is Tristar, have benefited growers for years and still do. Alternates for IREC class 4 include Mainspring, which is IREC 28, and Contos, which is IREC 23. So after the systemics come the contacts, the quick knockdown contact group pyrethroids, all of which are class three, and include familiar names like Astro, Talstar, Decathlon, Tame, and Maverick. Highly toxic and very easy for resistance to build with repeated use, these spray contact products provide a quick fix to certain insect infestations. Remember, don't use these products without another IRAC class in the tank mix to prevent resistance from building. Moving now to insect growth regulation and bacillus products, all of which are OMRI certified, insect population control is made more effective by disrupting the life cycles of that pest, thereby eliminating the next generations without traditional chemical applications. Distance controls white flies, fungus gnats, scale, and other insects by preventing the eggs, larvae, and pupae from maturing into adults. Pedestal and azotin prevent proper molting, Endeavor stops the adult aphids and white flies from feeding. The BTs lay dormant until they enter the alkaline insect stomach, which activates the bacillus attacking the gut and punching holes in the stomach lining, killing that insect. BT Israeliensis is specific only to fungus gnats, and BT Kurostaki work on Lepidoptera. Shifting gears just a little bit, we're going to look at a class that uh, focuses only on Lepidoptera. These two products discussed here, both Dipel Pro and Entrust, stop the feeding activity of Lepidoptera insects in the worm stage. Both are also emery certified materials, which are Organic Materials Review Institute certification process, but Entrust has no greenhouse ornamental label, only Dipel Pro has that. So these two products would be considered if you have an uh, organic-based production regime that you're using in your greenhouse. Expire, we're talking about a combination product here. It's a combination of IRAC 4 and 5, both classes of nerve toxins. Related mode of actions, resistance may be an issue down the road, and this product should be rotated or combined with other products for long-term pest control. Unclassified means they really don't know how to segment the pesticidal activity. Botanicard is a fungal-based agent that infects a large number of soft-bodied pests. New Farms Overture works via contacts or ingestions on thrips and Lepidoptera while being soft on beneficial insects. A very important class of products is the miticides. There are six IRAC classes in this discussion that have been recommended by outside research and label recommendations. These materials need to be on hand at all times because when mites strike, they strike fast and spread even faster under the right environmental conditions. Tetrasand is a bit different than applause or hexagon, even being all IRAC class 10s. Engulf, once thought to be a neurotoxin, is really a mitochondrial disruptor and does provide long-term residual control while being soft on beneficials. Akari and sand mite are both metacaricides, disrupting the mitochondrial development as well. Contos and Judo inhibit acetyl-CoA carboxylase production, which is also a mitochondrial development disruptor. Minx-2, which is apomectin, it disrupts primarily the locomotion and reduces the feeding and sensing on arachnids, while pylon, which is IRAC class 13, is an oxidative phosphorylation disruptor which also inhibits mitochondrial ATP synthesis and supports the other miticides in this list. And again, as promised, here's that summary sheet again for the key insect pest of greenhouse production. Make a copy of this and keep it as a reference in your files. All of the active ingredients above are recommended by independent researchers and labeled recommendations for the identified pest. Of note, New Farm products are well represented and is what we do to provide you with tools for you to be able to complete your job as a grower. Thanks again for reviewing this information and look for more detailed learnings based on the feedback from you, our partners in greenhouse and crop production. Visit us for more information at the below address, newfarm.com backslash US turf backslash production backslash GHN underscore solution.